to be a creative intro, but it's it's not. I'm just making fun of you because I live by the beach. <laughs> this is why no one likes you. Hey, welcome to my channel. I absolutely did not record the rest of my intro. I'm editing right now and I just realized like I never said the rest of it. So uh, thank you of course to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you to Anitra at Say What Reacts. You're both great. And uh, this is the uh, episode three, I think. Um, I'm actually, as soon as I hit export on this, I'm going to start episode four. So, uh, yeah, so that, that's really all I've got. Uh, thank you guys. Um, you should probably know the drill by now cause we're, this is going to be the third video. So just, uh, reacting as I read it and, uh, sharing, sharing my thoughts. So, uh, here we go. So I'm, I'm only through like the intro of the third episode or whatever it is but i just i wanted to say that i know this is all for a plot and of course i don't know what Jin has done to cause certain things like things that he is actively responsible for but i do want to say that um you are not responsible to save anyone and in fact you're not capable of saving anyone so um Obviously, we're dealing with a plot here and with a story, and it's a beautifully told story. But I just, I just want to make a point of saying that um, you cannot be a savior and try to basically do what Jin is doing. Now, obviously, if someone needs help, you can help them, but um, you have to like take care of yourself too, which I think is a big aspect of this. That Jin's obviously not doing that; he's kind of ignoring himself to save the others or putting himself through a lot. So I just think that's worth saying. You should care about other people. You should put effort in. And if you know someone's struggling, you should like, you know, see what you can do about that. But at the same time, you know, I'm, I'm just, I think you guys probably know what I'm trying to say, but just, you know, guard your heart and, and be careful. He said the thing. He said it's been a while. It means I sort of vaguely kind of a little bit, not really, but I'm pretending to know where I am in the plot. Now that is what I'm talking about when I'm saying that you can like help someone versus needing to save them is just Jin like grabbing the money and just picking it up. So that RM isn't forced into this position of, of servitude and subservience and less than uh, to this jerk who rolls up. Uh, and I, you know, we've all seen people like this. So this is a pretty realistic thing that he's going to have to deal with. Uh, so good guy Jin on helping and uh, sort of extending an olive branch. Because I get the feeling that there's some tension between them just from the way it's been framed and the, the way that they're talking to each other. I feel like something went wrong two years ago that either caused Jin to leave or before he left or whatever it was. So that's, that's my guess. Um, yeah. Isn't it worth asking why this rich guy is even like being a jerk? Like, bro, you drive a minivan. It's hard to be cool in a minivan. Anyway, good on Jin for helping him. When I got to that still frame of Jungkook falling before he like lands on the car, I'm telling you, like my my heart literally dropped, like it skipped a beat, and uh, it just makes me sad. So when he says we need to find Jungkook, yeah, you need to find Jungkook, yeah. I'm sure that there is, but is there really a reason that he's not telling RM like? Even just, I have a bad feeling. I, I feel like something bad is going to happen. Like, I feel like that's... I feel like that's pretty doable. Maybe Jin has his own reasoning, though. I don't know. Um, I just feel like he could tell him, you know? But I love the way he ended that. 
Someday, let's go to the beach together. So in storytelling, something we try to do is set goals and objectives for our characters. And by try to do, I mean, you have to do it or the writing is not good. It's just, these are the rules. They now have this super objective to get the group back together and go to the beach. And is that like a, is that a high stakes dramatic uh, objective? No, but what does that actually mean? What's the hidden objective within that? Keep everyone alive. And we know that at least two of them are in imminent danger because within the next like, what, month? Two of them are dead. Two of them are in the hospital. So yeah, oh, and two are in jail. So <laughs> they're doing really well. So it seems like, yeah, high stakes. That's what we're dealing with here. These are really high stakes situations. So yeah, it makes sense that, that he's saying, let's go to the beach. Let's go to the beach. Let's go get away. But what is he really saying to himself? What's his objective? Save everyone. And now he's bringing RM alongside that while still protecting him with the information. And I'm sure that there's a reason for not telling him. I just don't know what it is. Just give me a reason, just a little bit's enough. The good news is I'm starting to be able to tell them apart because I've seen a lot of Jen, Jungkook, and RM so far. That news is the sun is starting to come through that window pretty bright, but it... Makes me glow like a little golden person. So. RM saw Jungkook. This is great news. This is great. Hopefully he saves him. And just like that, he lost him. He just lost him because he didn't want to play Frogger. Which makes sense. He's not here. He's not here. Was RM talking to Jungkook from across the street? Is that what saved him? Maybe, like, is that why Jungkook's not on the roof? Because it's not like, like Jin didn't find him and RM didn't get to cross the street. So I don't know. So this uh, scene where, where Jin is standing on the roof and he says, can I really trust my memories? And it starts on the crane. And then if you think about it like a camera, it pans down and then whips back up to him. And it's this incredible kind of fishbowl lens. If you think of really wide lens that's placed there, that is a really, really cool uh, moment of just visualizing the story. Uh, that is something that you like, that's not something you could really do in film and have the same effect that they've done in this. And so that's one of the really cool things about visual art. I've mentioned before, I'm terrible at drawing. I can't draw to save my life. So I admire the artists who were able to look at this story and think, you know, I, I literally just can't even think that way. So I just wanted to point out how cool that that frame is. Okay, well, that was that was that that was that episode. So uh, it seems like maybe Jungkook is safe in this, in this timeline, which of course means something else is going to go terribly wrong and make someone else not safe. But for now, Jungkook is safe, which is great. I don't know whether it was RM that saved him or if it was Jin that did something that he's not even aware of. So he's not going to narrate it to us. That's what's interesting about this is we're dealing with an unreliable narrator. It's not like an omniscient narrator that's just going to show us multiple things this is sort of Jin's understanding of, of everything that's taken place. And, and I think that that is sort of based in his Awake short film is kind of where we see that, yeah, this is all coming from his space and from his perspective. And so he's an unreliable narrator, uh, not intentionally. He's not going to lie to us. He's just not going to get everything right, which makes it really interesting from a story standpoint. So I'm not sure what happened, but hopefully... Uh, and I say this knowing that it won't, but hopefully, naively, uh, this just fixed everything and everything's good because it ended on a note of confusion and perhaps frustration as far as where is Jungkook, but uh, not crushing sadness. So that's good. That's great, actually. But yeah, that's it for this one. Hopefully I'll have the next one out tomorrow, but uh, you know the drill. You'll see them as they come up. Uh, until then... Be safe, take care of yourselves, drink lots of water. Bye.